Hello, everyone. Happy Friday. We are coming to you on a special day today. Normally, we do our live talks on Tuesday and our migraine strategy call, but we have so many amazing graduates lately that we're going to kind of be doubling up for a few weeks. So we have the bonus of having Chantal and her husband Dave with us today. So we're going to do a interview in just a moment, but let me quickly introduce myself for those of you who don't know me. I am Debbie Weidel. I am a certified functional migraine health coach specialist here to help you find your migraine freedom without having to live a life of pills, quick fixes, and risky surgeries that really don't bring you to your end results anyway. So thank you both for being here today. I really appreciate it. You're welcome. Yes, thank you for having us. Absolutely. Well, let me just give you a little bit of background on Chantal before we start, and then we'll jump right in. So Chantal is married to her husband, Dave, who obviously is here with us today, is a mom of two children, three stepchildren, two grandchildren, and what do they like to call you, Chantal? Granny Shani. <laughs> Granny Shani, I love that. <laughs> and you have two dogs and a hamster, too. Chantal says she's a Christian, a work in progress, and loves hanging out with her family taking walks or bike rides in scenic areas and enjoys body combat and box fit. I love that. And that is something I did not know about you after all your time in the Freedom from Migraine Method. I love that. Um, Chantal, your migraine started in 2015 and on a consistent basis, they were pretty consistent most of the time with kind of varying pain levels that you say went up and down like your head was on a dimmer switch which a neurologist diagnosed as being status migraineous. I love their different diagnoses. I really do. Cracks me up. Um, now Chantel says her head pain has reduced to the point of her having more, much better days with only low level pain and plans to have many more fun and special times with family and friend, not being consumed with head pain. That's amazing. So again, thank you for being here. And we're going to jump right in and chat about the impact that migraines has had on your family and on your career. So Chantal, tell me, what was family like life when you had chronic migraines? Um, for the most part, to be honest, I did try to push through really. And, you know, I just got on with things. Um, I've always just been one to get on and do things probably too much, which is maybe what has, you know, partly contributed to why my head pain um, became what it was. Um, at the same time, I know myself, though, that, you know, I felt for Dave or for the children, maybe some days I'd push through at work. And, you know, by the time they came home, because I was, you know, so exhausted, really, from pushing through, you know, I maybe wasn't in the best form, you know, um, Poor Dave, some days maybe, um, he felt like I probably didn't smile much at him. You know, it was just, a, it was tough going, um, you know, and for the children where they were concerned, again, you know, a lot of the time I tried to hide it and just get on with things. But I do know along the way, um, you know, there was time for it. Maybe the children weren't even making that much noise, but it was still enough for me to say, oh, you know, oh, please, you know, just keep the noise down or, even something simple where my youngest might have been making certain movements, you know, and even that just irritated my head. And like I felt bad having to say, you know, to her about that. Um, and I was just thinking back to, you know, my daughter, the youngest is only 10 now. And for years, you know, I used to hold my nose there as, you know, an active pressure point. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at times thinking back, where she actually would have been coming in and actually going like that on me, you know, and that was, you know, a, a few different, you know, over the years that happened really, which is, you know, sad that that was the case really. Um, where work really was concerned, um, again, <laughs> pushed through a lot of the time. Um, and initially I did actually keep going to work. Um, but then it hit a point where looking at the computer screen, it was, the pain was excruciating. And I remember typing and going like that and looking at the screen and typing. And in the end, I thought, this is crazy. What am I doing? Um, so I did at that point take, you know, um, three months off work um, just until I, I tried to get the pain, you know, under better pain management, really. 
Um, but even at that, then um, in the end, you know, it's still then it was a further three months really of um, phased return to work. Um, mm -hmm. And then the pain was still there, you know, but it was lower than what it had been. So I was able to function and, you know, get through. But I do know along the way, you know, I, I was crying in work. Um, I remember a certain occasion where somebody was saying something to me and I was having to take a note of it. And I literally, I just couldn't actually process it, whatever it was and the pain in my head. And, you know, they said it very quickly. And I was like, you know, please, can you slow down? I just couldn't process it. And, you know, I felt awful, you know, yeah. um, it's, it's awful having to even admit that, you know, and you, you just end up feeling really quite stupid, to be honest, you know, um, but I knew that it was because of my head pain. Um, 100%. Yeah. yeah, 100% because of your head pain, right? Because we get that when you're in so much pain, and that's all you can focus on. It is so hard to be able to concentrate on anything else. So anybody who's watching right now, um, I know Barbie's on the other end, kind of watching comments on the Women's Migrant Freedom Group. Let me know, does this sound like you? You know, are you struggling with going to work like Chantal was, or have you been, you know, not able to work because of that pain? And are you on disability because you're unable to work? It's hard enough in our days, right, to deal with the migraine pain, but then to do a job on top of that has got to be so challenging. Um, and just to backstep a little, I just wanted to mention about your, you know, your daughter, you said coming in and pinching your nose and it's just because it becomes, it was such a part of your life, wasn't it? You know, it was like migraine was another person in your life. So everybody picks up on all these things that you need to do to try to feel better because they want you to feel better. Oh, yes. I mean, I thought I was hiding it, but maybe I didn't always hide it as well. Um, as I thought maybe, but you know, just her doing that. And it was only recently and I'd forgot about this, but I happened to come across a letter that I had actually wrote to the girls school as well that I'd completely forgot I'd done, actually feeling the need to explain about the condition I had and that I would try to keep up with the girls homework and things. I'd actually completely forgot that I'd even done that, you know. Um, so, you know, there, there's much more impact, you know, um, than what I even remember. It was just that I came across that, you know, and I know I had shared with you previously that even when Dave and I um, got married, because uh, looking at the computer was so difficult for me, um, Dave had to really lead a lot of the wedding planning um, on my behalf. I, you know, he still he talked about it, but I just mm -hmm. couldn't do, you know, a lot of that stuff at the time. Yeah, I can't imagine how that felt. How did that feel to you, Dave, knowing that, you know, here you are about to marry Chantal, you know, such an important part in your lives, and she can't take a massive active part in planning it just because it hurts so much to do that? Well, firstly, the fact that she was going to marry me in the first place was great. <laughs> I bet That's that part was thing. great. <laughs> yes, yes, and that was good. But uh, yeah, obviously, it was, it was, it was hard for me to, to see Chantal uh, in the pain that she was. She said there, obviously, a lot of the time she did hide it. She did confess there a wee bit that maybe it wasn't hid as well as she maybe perhaps thinks it was. Yeah. Because there were certainly days whenever either the girls would come in or when I would come in, and you just knew by her body language and her, and her general mood that today wasn't a good day. Mm -hmm. So you tried to tiptoe around, you know, her, her feeling the way she was feeling trying to your best to support her as much as you could and at the same time realize you know at a moment's notice you could do something or I even I would I have a habit of I would move my leg a lot you know just sitting watching the tv and I would swing my foot in and out and I'm being told off for that or you know, I would have told you off too <laughs> you know, and, and uh you know you're breathing funny you know just just things just things that was irritating her at that yeah. moment so it was hard. And then obviously asking me about the, the wedding, it was very difficult then, again, uh, planning a wedding is very much a, well, it's for the bride and it's very much what the bride sort of tends to lean on. And, uh, uh, you know, you, you do want to help as a husband to be with the wedding plans. Uh, but I was, but at the same time, you kind of know you're part of this planning as a husband, but you're really not. 
<laughs> but I <laughs> was. Like you guys to think that you are anyway. <laughs> yeah, but but yeah, but uh, but at, on this occasion, obviously we made the big the big decision together. But the actual, you know, contacting the wedding planner, providing the information that was needed, you know, I was very much hands on for that because I didn't want Chantal. A lot of it was done on the computer, and so to try and limit Chantal's screen time, you know, and help as best I could and take away the, has that been done or has that been done? You know, the stress of, and I was just, yes, it's all done, it's all taken care of. And obviously we're now married and the day went off a great success. So, but yeah, I felt it for Chantal, you know, cause it is a big day and yeah, she missed out on a lot of the planning. Maybe she's secretly happy about that. I don't know, but. <laughs> But she's never gonna was, tell. Uh, no, 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 no. She hid, she kept that hidden well too, yes. Uh, so yeah, it's 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 been uh, it's not nice to see your loved one in, in, in the discomfort and pain that they're that they're in. And 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 in fairness to her, you know, she did battle her way through it to try and make sure that you know it didn't impact us as best as she could. But obviously, there you know, we knew ourselves, we just knew as a family, we knew. We just need to tread carefully here or change our plans around her so that it didn't cause any even more greater pain than what she was already in. So yeah. Absolutely. And I say this all the time to people, you know, the I work with women. So it's typically, you know, the woman I'm talking to that has the pain. Yes, they are the one that has the migraine, but migraines are really a family affair. You know, no matter how much we try to hide it, because I tried to hide it too. And you try to hide it because you want to spare your family, but also, and I'm sure you might have felt this way too, Chantal, you kind of get sick of saying you don't feel good. It's like, how many times can you say over and over again, I have a headache, I have a headache and or a migraine, and I had them every day and you had them, you were chronic as well. So you just get tired of saying it. Um, you know, and then the third reason is we are carers, right? We are the moms, we're the wives. We want to take care of everyone else. And we don't always do well with people taking care of us, you know, because we put everyone else first. Does that kind of sound a little bit like you? A whole lot like me. Yes, very much so. And I know I did, you know, in work, I, I kind of felt sick of the sound of my own voice, you know, in there where I was maybe a bit more vocal at times um, and, you know, having to say in the end, you know, what was going on with me. Um, you know, I, I just had to be honest really about it, you know, because I really did feel sometimes in terms of maybe even tasks, not getting them done quickly enough, mm -hmm. but it was again, you know, when you have excruciating pain and, you know, it's hard to see past that. So it did affect my focus and concentration, you know, and trying to get things done. Um, so they did maybe take longer, but thankfully my work were, you know, very understanding, you know, so <laughs> that was good. Absolutely. And you're very fortunate in that because there are many women that don't have that same, you know, situation where their job doesn't quite understand. They have bosses that don't understand that, you know, they have migraines or let's face it, there are some jobs where you have to be on your game. You know, if you're in healthcare and you have a migraine, <laughs> you're kind of pushing through because your patients need you, you know, or a teacher that's, you know, with, you know, students that are young, you know, what are you going to do with your first graders? You can't go curl up in a ball. Um, so, Thank goodness you had a job that was able to let you eventually work on yourself and get to the point you're at. So let's fast forward a little bit. You know, we know that family, how the family life was and how work was. So then you found us, you worked through the freedom from migraine method. You know, I know it was definitely a big decision for you to do. And I think the biggest reason you needed to make a decision was because you weren't really used to putting yourself first. And I think that investment really kind of held you back a little bit. You know, you weren't really sure that you were ready to invest that much in yourself, but you did. And now we're here today. So how does life look a little bit different since you were willing to be able to do that for yourself? Um, I definitely feel that I would be happier, you know, and, um, you know, I'm sure that Dave and, you know, my children and others, you know, can see that too. Um, I just know myself, you know, that um, I just don't have the same level of fatigue, you know, and just I'm not as irritable, you know, and I'll give even pain that I would have had, you know, in my neck, um, right up through and into my ears, you know, 
all of that has lifted, um, which is fantastic. Um, now, again, I do know if I start to feel a niggle, you know, then I'll follow, you know, some of the fantastic tools that I learned in the program. Um, and I'm just so very thankful that you did, you know, have the wisdom um, and insight just to develop the program and do the work that you're doing, you and, you know, your team, um, because it really has changed my life. Um, I know for me, you know, it was daily pain um, over six years, but I know some of the ladies um, in the group, you know, where it's 30, 40 years. And mm -hmm. when I initially found it and I just thought, goodness, I do not want to be that person. Yeah. that you know all those years down the line still going through this um it was a lot of money you know um for me to spend on myself because I just don't do that um I feel guilty um you know um but ultimately in the end I just thought you know it'll it will be better for everybody you know because it was like oh I could be buying this for the children or Dave or the house or whatever but you know they just want me to be happy and not in pain you know so um it was money well invested, that's for sure. And, you know, now I am really seeing the improvements coming through. And as you, you mentioned before there, um, you know, that it is much lower level pain that I have now. And, you know, I was working out since I finished um, on the 16th of December. So 50 days. And actually um, out of that, um, there has been about 40 of those days or have actually been lower level pain. Um, there's only been, you know, about 10 that have been, you know, higher level. Um, and when I say higher level, I'm still only meaning around five, level mm -hmm. five or six, which that's still huge for me, you know, because there was many a time I was trying to function right up at the, the top of the level, you know, of nine, 10. And that's without medication, which is also just absolutely amazing, because that was the other thing that I really did like about the program. Um, was that, you know, I didn't want to be on medication. Before this happened with my head, I would barely have taken paracetamol. Mm -hmm. um, and in the end, goodness, I was trialing all different types of things, you know, and then, as you know, um, the Sultan and Botox and trying it um, just as I, well, that was in the June and I joined the program in August and chose not to get my second round off it um, and just to really work hard on the program. And it has paid off. Thank the Lord. So that's great. I love it. And, and I love how you mentioned that you might not be migraine free yet, but everything, you know, we work on a reduction in severity, duration and frequency. And then we also have to throw in there that we're working on reducing medications, you know, so it's kind of like a, a step process, right? You know, we go through all these things that we work on, you get that reduction and then you might have this little roller coaster ride where things might go up a little when you do get off of meds. But that's a temporary thing while you, you know, your body works on adjusting and actually gets back to doing what it's supposed to do. Because when you're taking meds, your body forgets that it actually has the job to help you because the meds are doing it. So it is amazing that you've been able to really pull back from those medications. And the day that you told me that you weren't going to do your second round of Botox, I think I went around smiling all day because <laughs> you were ready, right? You were ready and you knew you could do that. So. So Dave, tell me, what does the house look like now? How is life different? Oh, well, it's it's definitely, again, it's just great to see the Chantal that I met pretty much back to how she was when I first met her. Um, it's great. Uh, now, on occasions, I still come in, I have to tiptoe, but that's completely different uh, for different for reasons. For different reasons. <laughs> for different reasons, yes. But no, it's great that, you know, even for family days out, it's great to know, although, as Chantal said, it was very rare for her to ever not do the family days, but I just know by her, by her uh, facial expressions that there was days that she pushed through it and it was a struggle, therefore not enjoying it. So it's great to see that every activity that we now go and plan and do, we, we do, and she enjoys it as much as, as we are enjoying it, which again is great to see. Um, so yeah, it's, and, and as, Regarding the, the medication as well, I'm I, I'm not a, a in favour of medication myself. Uh, thankfully, you know I'm in good health that I don't need medication. But uh, if we can if we can treat something without medication, you know I'm a great believer in that. Uh, also, I have to say that the the, the program indirectly helped me because I've never ate so healthily. 
<laughs> so I think I've shifted a few pounds here as a result of uh, of me also eating healthy and, and cutting out certain things, you know, because there was no point Chantal doing this and then and then cooking my dinner and cooking the girls, having three or four different dinners, you know, that just wasn't going to happen. It'll just add to the the, the head pain. So we, we were taking it in turns there. Obviously, we're both working. So whoever got home first, it was free first, they started the dinner. Yep. And yeah, again, as a result of Chantal's healthier choices, I just cracked on and ate the same as she did. And maybe a wee bit more of a portion, but I still ate the same. And I feel great for it too. Yeah. I love Although one thing, I, one thing I do laugh about is because I had such a sweet tooth and um, I cutting out sugar was a big thing for me. Mm. And I've always had a wee biscuit, at, um, you know, with my tea after dinner. But I don't do that any longer. But Dave I do. <laughs> does not, <laughs> which wasn't something he did before mm. meeting me. But so he, he stuck with that. <laughs> yes, yes. But he's gained some really good habits, which, again, you just reiterated the fact that, you know, and typically when I get on the, the first call, when I talk to people, I like to have this the other support person, you know, and obviously for you, Chantal, it's your husband. But we like to have that other support person there because this is a family affair. And look at the amazing results that not just for you, Chantal, but really for your whole family. And I'm sure because you're eating that way, Dave's eating that way, the kids are eating that way. You've given them such an amazing gift by giving them the gift of health as well, you know, by the ways that you're eating and the shifts that you've made, which is wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. I love it. I love it. All right. Any last words of wisdom from either one of you, anything else that you would like to share with the amazing women that are watching right now in the Women's Migraine Freedom Group and why you do that, I will make sure that there's no comments over here from them that they want answered from you before we go. Um, I guess just really the other big part of it that was um, great was all the wonderful women that were in the, the group and the support group then really. Um, you know, they um, completely understood, you know, where I was coming from and the understanding. So it was just a great support network. Um, to have that as well, um, you know, even down to when I think back, um, I remember somebody sharing about how a pattern on a jumper had annoyed their head, and I thought, goodness, that's happened to me before, yeah. but at the time, I was thinking, oh my goodness, you know, what's going on, that jumper's annoying me, that sounds ridiculous, but you know, just other ladies in that group had experienced that, so, you know, that was nice, just having that extra component, um, as part of the program um, for anybody who is you know on the fence and should I do this for myself I mean I just really urge you to go for it um, it really will be the best decision that you could make um, you know for yourself um, investing in yourself and looking after yourself and then just the benefits then for your family as well and friends you know um, because again whilst I went and I um, I did normally do things with family, but I was there in body, but I wasn't really always there in, you know, fully present in how I felt, you know, and maybe I was just quieter. Um, so maybe sometimes they didn't even think too much, but I know myself, you know, that um, I just wasn't enjoying maybe what we were doing as much as I could have been because of my head, you know, um, which yeah, it was just very, very sad, you know, um, but um, just again, the ladies in the group, the support and the experience and just sharing things together, um, they completely got it, you know, so they did, which was great and understanding how debilitating, you know, migraines are, you know, so. I love that. I love that. And it really is important to have that community, right? Because even though you have an amazing husband here, absolutely amazing that he's joined you today and been part of this whole process, he doesn't get migraines and he's not female. <laughs> so to be able to be in a group of women that are really going through the exact same stage as you are and to be able to share that experience. And even women that are from your country, we have right now 40% of the people in the Freedom for Migraine Method are from the UK. And about you know 40 to 45 are US. And then we have women scattered in China, Australia, Canada, Mexico, um, quite a few other places. So it's amazing to be in this community of like women who really can help each other get to the to that end goal of migraine freedom. Okay. How about you, Dave? So Anything else you wanted? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm no, sorry. sorry. I was just saying it was just very motivational, you know, even just when they would be saying about things that were going well for them and working, 
you know, it just gave you that extra push as well, you know, that you knew that it was possible as well. Sorry. Absolutely. No, you're fine. And you're right, because you are going to hit points in the program, right, where we, ha we have women at all different stages, some that are new and some that are about to graduate. So for those people that are new, I think it's very important to see the women that are about to graduate and see the fact that they do have success, because in the beginning, you think, is this really going to work? You know, is this going to help me? I'm not really sure if it's going to. So to be able to, you can't model what you don't see, right? So to be able to see that really helps keep you moving forward. I love that. I love it. Dave, how about you? Anything else you want to leave the group with? Yes, uh, for, for all those in the group that are just starting this journey or halfway through the journey, um, I seen firsthand how much hard work it, it, it is involved. Uh, and some days you won't feel like doing it because of the pain that you're in. I seen that with Chantal. You know, there was a lot of a lot of times there. There was things that she was doing, pushing herself through the, the pain to accomplish what it was that she was trying to 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 achieve. And in the back of my head, I was I was like, good grief, the amount of, the amount of effort that is really being put in here uh, would give any anybody a headache. Would give you a headache. <laughs> to be honest, that's what I that's, I, 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 I did say stop that. and say. I says that's yeah. hardly going to help your head, but it does. And it did. And obviously, we're now sitting here at the end of it. And when I think back to all the hard work and effort that it does take, and it's not easy. No. It's not easy for the, 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 the ones who are suffering. And it's not easy for the loved ones to see uh, the, the amount of time and effort that it's taking and, and the pain sometimes that you're going through to get there. But stick with it because it will, it will just... It'll all drop into place and yeah, the outcome will be pain free or lower pain free. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. I, I love that because it's very important to be honest. You know, migraine freedom is not an easy process. If it were easy, one in four women wouldn't have migraines, right? You know, we'd all be migraine free because it would be a snap. The process is simple. That doesn't mean it's easy. But the great thing is the group of women are there to support the team of seven that we have are there to support, you know, and we have an amazing program that's broken down into step-by-step -step very simply so that you can do it at your pace and at your time. Mm -hmm. But yes, you can't come into it thinking that, you know, Debbie and her team have this magic wand yeah. that's just going to make migraines yeah. go away. I wish we did. I yes. wish we did. Cause then none of us would have to waste all the days and hours and years that we waste, but we don't have to anymore. And Chantal, I'm glad you're not going to waste as many days as you used to. And I'm so glad to continue to see your success as you let your body heal from being on those meds and Botox and keep working on the things you're working on. It's just wonderful to see that. Um, we have a few people on, we have Michelle watching, we have Barbie watching, Allison's on, Julie's on, Katie's on. So you have quite a few, few women over there watching today. Um, Michelle says she can so relate her migraines were so bad, but she still forces herself to work, um, you know, in days where she just would have, uh, when dizziness and nausea and head was pounding. Um, and we do that, right? We push through. So the one thing I just, I wanted to mention before, when you said that you push through, we need to remember in the moment, I get why we do it. I was a pusher through or two. I had 10 years of daily migraines and I was raising my kids and working and there was nobody else to do it. So I was doing it. So I pushed, but unfortunately, every time we push, we increase the inflammation in our body. And we know if you've been in this group long enough that migraines are caused by inflammation. So we think that we have to, we think we need to push because that's life, but know that there's a better way to do it because the more you push, the more the migraines are gonna stay. So if you need support with that, please reach out, please let us know. And you two are amazing. I can't thank you enough for being here today and sharing your story and giving your time to us at uh, 7.30. Is that right? 7.30 on a Friday night? Yes, yeah. yes it is. <laughs> well, thank you very much for having us. Um, I'm really not one. I don't like public speaking and doing anything like this, to be honest. Um, but I just if I can help anybody out there, you know, and help them in kind of making that decision to, to do that and help themselves. You know, that's why I was very keen to just come on and speak because I know myself, 
you know, watching other people's videos, just how important um, I found it and it really helped me. Um, so just hopefully, um, you know, can help somebody else out there, you know, um, and yeah, definitely just give that gift to themselves and, you know, do it. I the work is that. hard, and yeah, as they have said, you know, <laughs> definitely, but you get out what you put in, you know, 100%. Um, so, yeah. And Absolutely. thank you again for everything. Oh, Chantelle, it has been my pleasure. If anyone has any questions, is it okay if they tag us in this video? Yes, most definitely. Wonderful, wonderful. Well, again, Chantal, Dave, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for giving your Friday evening to us to help the thousands of women that are in this group that are just lost as to what to do to end their pain. We really, really appreciate you sharing your story and time. And we cannot wait to see where all this takes you in the future. It's just gonna be more and more pain-free days. All right, everybody, we're gonna call it a wrap so that you guys can go enjoy your Friday. Thank you for joining. Yes. Thank you for watching. And for those of you in the Women's Migraine Freedom Group, we will see you next Tuesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 5 p.m. in the UK for our next migraine strategy call. Thanks everybody. Have a great day. Thank you. Here's to your migraine free day.